Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of Shrinkcraft Book Reviews on my channel, JC Lee MD. I'm your host, Jonathan Jaha Lee, a Chinese Canadian, Pisces Sun, and Aries Moon, uh, and uh, a child and adolescent psychiatrist. Um, and on this channel, uh, for those of you who are joining me for the first time, um, I review a lot of the books that patients that I've seen have recommended to me, um, or books that have particular relevance to psychology, society, um, the mind and the soul. As a soul doctor, that's my that's my yin and yang. So um, today I have a really special review of a book that I read first when I was about 12 years old, um, when I attended the University of Toronto Schools, or UTS, um, Dalut Arbor Ita Ramis. Um, and that was my alma mater for high school. Some of you may also know a very illustrious graduate from that school, um, also a fellow Canuck and Chinese Canadian, Simu Liu, you may have heard of him, uh, Shang Chi. Um, but in, in, in our sort of 13, 13th year, 14th year, we all read this book by Viktor E. Frankl uh, entitled Man's Search for Meaning. Um, and for those of you who do not know, uh, uh, Dr. Frankl uh, is a psychiatrist um, and also a neurologist, um, and he has been you know, appointed the head of academic departments um, in Bavaria in Germany, and um, he is a concentration camp survivor. Now, I read this book again recently on my flight back from Toronto uh, to LA, kind of some nostalgia, and it floors me that we were reading this, um, you know, in our prepubescent kind of 12 to 13 year old state. Um, to say that it is full of gravitas and wisdom is an absolute understatement. Um, I think that there are certain things that really can only be accrued um, and experienced as one goes through suffering. And I think this is a very painful uh, reality for many of us who experience that kind of emotional or soul suffering that comes with depression or anxiety or other kind of kinds of psychiatric disorders. Um, but Dr. Frankel really gives um, a harrowing account of what it was like to live in a concentration camp for many years, or several concentration camps, I should say, in Auschwitz and Dachau um, and the like, and what he gained from it. This isn't a rosy, uh, you know, kind of picture. It's actually quite bleak, um, and it really gets at the banality of how, how people can treat each other. One of the things uh, that was an outgrowth of Dr. Frankel's experiences um, was a particular branch of therapy called logotherapy, which I've, I've become really interested in, um, again, just from reading about his experiences. And in logotherapy, unlike some other existential type therapies, you know, as posited by Irving Yalom and others, logotherapy is really about searching for meaning. So he talks about Freud, um, the will to pleasure, the pleasure principle. He talks about Adler, um, the will to power, or like figuring out power dynamics in our life and the community feel. And he posits and offers that logotherapy is the will to meaning. And what I love about this idea is that dialectic, that we can go through the most brutal, painful, unjust suffering and still have the freedom to choose what meaning we ascribe to it, what we glean from it. Um, there's a particular phrase, um, and I want to make sure I read it and, and get it correct. You're going to hear my German, which I learned in high school as well at UTS. Was du erlebst, kann keine Macht der Welt dir rauben. Um, and that is translated as being what you've experienced, no power on earth can take from you. For a lot of us, I think when we suffer, when we experience injustice, um, it can feel like there's absolutely no meaning. Um, it can feel like just blind cosmic um, unluckiness, you know, or, or cruelty or sadism. Um, and what, what Frankel sort of describes is this difference in posture amongst prisoners in the concentration camps and even the difference in postures of, of SS 
uh, you know, members and capos in the camp. Um, he describes how some, you know, treated each other as humans, um, which isn't that what it's all about. Um, and others treated each other as swine. Um, in the midst of persecution and suffering, um, they would steal each other's cigarettes um, and morsels of bread. Um, and, you know, he talks about how when you are naked and cold, stripped of your identity, stripped of your clothing, stripped of all of these outward accoutrements that tend to give us power, we still, in that situation, have the opportunity to choose and the freedom to choose to live in a way that's in accordance with our values. And there's so many um, aspects of this book that have let, left such a deep impression in my mind. Um, obviously, I'm coming back to it you know, more than two decades after first reading it and seeing it with, with new light. But that idea of nothing is wasted um, unless we waste it, um, and that our suffering can gain for us you know, an immense degree of experience and wisdom and perspective, um, I think is so, so helpful in and at times, you know, really nihilistic and excessive, existentially inclined society. Now, for those of you who are Christian um, in this viewership, um, I gotta say, I have no idea if Dr. Frankel is a believer. He certainly seems to speak with a weightiness and a gravitas that suggests he knows God. Um, you know, whether he would ascribe to being an evangelical Christian or um, a Jewish person or even irreligious, um, I think that there is an undeniable gravitas with which he speaks and, and writes. Um, and I would say to those of you who are suffering, who are believers, um, logotherapy actually really fits, at least with my, um, you know, sort of theological construals of suffering. How do we reconcile suffering with um, a good God? Um, and I think if we come to this idea that God exists um, and that nothing is wasted, it makes it possible for us to go through the trauma of, of divorce and um, defamation and, uh, you know, sort of accusations of people uh, that are ungrounded, ungrounded um, and just untrue. And to be able to say, you know, even in this, even in this, um, I will gain meaning. And even the, in this, you know, you can knock me down, but I'm not gonna stay down because my God is the one who is ascribing and helping me achieve and attain that meaning um, through all of these hoops and hurdles until we ultimately land in eternity. So um, for those of you who are just interested in psychotherapy, for those of you who are interested in history, for those of you who are human people, um, who want to read something that really touches the soul, I think this is a great book um, for you all to, to go out um, and get and borrow. One of the, the lasting impressions I had in the final chapters of um, Dr. Frankel's book here um, is his hope for logotherapy to really bring a new kind of humanism or human feel to the somewhat um, ascetic or academic field of psychotherapy. And that to me is so, so exciting because I think sometimes as psychotherapists, we can rest on our laurels and become, you know, otherworldly aliens who don't really get it. But this is a man who, um, through obvious and heinous and, and brutal circumstances has accrued that kind of openness and compassion for others um, that is hard, hard one, but really spectacular uh, to witness and to experience vicariously. Um, so until next time, happy reading and love yourself.